Huge thanks to Verve for sponsoring today's video. Verve is an awesome streaming platform that brings together some of the most awesome content all to one place. They've got tons of your favorite cartoons and anime, and a bunch of original content as well. Lately, I've been catching up on My Hero Academia, as well as checking out one of their original shows called Harmon Quest, which is a must-watch for any D&D fans out there like me. And since we are talking about some WB stuff today, did I mention they have freaking Freakazoid? So check it out, this is a really awesome place to find cartoons and anime that you know and love, as well as finding some new stuff that you can only find on here. Get a 30 day free trial of Verve by clicking my link, it is right in the top of the description downstairs, which will give you ad free access to all of the awesome content on Verve. I mean, 30 days of free cartoons and anime. You can watch a lot in 30 days. Binge safely. All right, let's talk about Space Jam. It's like this weird Venn diagram of two of my very favorite things, cartoons and the NBA. Of course, many of you are gonna think, I don't know a damn thing about basketball. After all, I did say this in a video. Just like Bugs Bunny broke the rules when he pulled Michael Johnson into that golf hole. Now I thought that was pretty obviously a joke, especially when I also reference this guy as Steve Curry and this guy as hip-hop producer Pharrell in the same video. The reality is, I was raised playing basketball and watching the NBA. I played in elementary school all through high school, so all of my drive and inspiration for playing basketball, other than my dad, came from being an avid fan of the NBA. Guys like Cody Bryans and Kevin Garrett were the type of NBA stars that I grew up looking up to. Okay, we're all in on the joke now? In all seriousness, the NBA in the 90s was huge for me. I was lucky enough to see some of Jordan's most iconic moments live on TV, got to see Kobe and Shaq rise to greatness, and of course, got to see some kid out of a random high school in Ohio get drafted and call himself the king. <laughs> yeah, right, I mean, there's no way he lived up to that. I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. That's simple. And it has steered him here into 2018 where both Nostalgia and LeBron James are king. And a mashup between the NBA and the Looney Tunes seems to be back on the menu. But barring my love for the Looney Tunes and of course the NBA in the 90s, is making another Space Jam movie right here in the year 2018 really a good idea? I mean, I know, LeBron James just moved right here to LA, but even so, this could be a simply terrible idea. Okay, well, first things first, we gotta take a look back at the original, just even briefly. The NBA's biggest stars, led by his heirness, Michael Jordan, mixed together with the Looney Tunes. What's going on here? We need your help! Now, here in 2018, this concept is beyond laughable. But in 1996, when Space Jam came out, there were sillier things happening with movies. Uh, your nephew. Uh, baby's got a little gale. <laughs> <laughs> Simply as a product of its own time, Space Jam was awesome. Everyone I knew thought it was hilarious and cool. And me, as an eight-year-old kid with Looney Tunes VHS tapes on his shelves and a KG poster on his wall, thought it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah! Of course, many of you have later discovered this childhood ruining fact, that Space Jam isn't actually good. Now, many people will argue that the 90s is the best decade of NBA basketball, and it's undoubtedly awesome. And then you have the Looney Tunes, which are a bona fide classic. Seriously, I don't care how old you are, go back and watch some of the classic Looney Tunes shorts. They're still just so witty and clever and beautifully animated, they couldn't hold up any better. I demand that you shoot me now! Yeah. But then you pop these two classics into one movie and things get a little dicey. Time to play a little basketball. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, there are things that are great about Space Jam. Seeing these NBA icons in this comedy setting is fun, and the way they translated the traits from the players to the Monstars was actually really clever and something I didn't even put together as a kid. Like the tall lanky guy is Sean Bradley, the thick angry guy is Barkley, and so on. Cool concept. Not Charles Barkley. It's a wannabe who looks like him. 
And of course, we can't forget the 2D and live action interaction that is still something to be applauded, though we had seen a better version almost a decade earlier in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And yes, of course, the theme song, which is simply beyond reproach. But all that's in the past now. And as the NBA grows even more popular, it seems the time for one of the most beloved basketball movies ever made, that is not hyperbole by the way, to get its due sequel. And in order for a Space Jam movie to work at all, you need a star. A star as big and well-known and popular as Michael Jordan. So with his career just ever so slightly past his prime, that's debatable of course, LeBron James seems to have perfectly positioned himself as the obvious choice for this job. Now, with regards to skill and legacy and GOAT conversations, well, I'm going to stay out of that territory for the sake of my own comment section. But the fact that that conversation is happening a lot lately, and even at all, is enough reason for him to don the mantle of the jam. Now, for a while, there was talk of Blake Griffin helming the film, because not only did he seem to be becoming the league's next high-flying superstar, but he was also showing much stronger acting and comedy chops in comparison to his peers. But his career took a bit of a different turn, and if the Looney Tunes needed help in some basketball-related task, Blake, I'm afraid, wouldn't be the guy who they would ask. Sorry, Blake. Now, a guy the Tunes might actually turn to is Kevin Durant, who was also rumored to helm in this film. He certainly has the skill to help the Toon Squad, but his acting... Uh, well, have you seen Thunderstruck? Oh, you haven't. Well, it's a complete dumpster fire, in large part to KD's stiff acting and just general lack of charisma. Probably not Space Jam material. And I know, I know, Michael Jordan was no actor either, but his pure iconic status was enough to help him carry the movie. And as for KD, well, he doesn't exactly have that type of iconic status. Sorry, KD. He's an idiot. Don't listen to this. He's an idiot. All right, that's what we got to say about that. Anyway, if we're all really honest with ourselves, even if you loathe LeBron James, you have to admit he is the only one who can star in this film, which is good because he ended up signing a deal with WB. So at this point, we're just basically waiting for the film to happen. I mean, he was pretty good in Trainwreck, so I think he can do at least as good of a job as Jordan in the movie. And it being the off-season in the NBA right now, combined with LeBron James moving out here to Hollywood, it's more likely now than ever that the film is in production and planning, even as you watch this very video. So if you will indulge me, I have just a few ideas of how to make Space Jam 2, well, not suck. So let's start small. Now I know most of these casting type choices have already been made, but I would say to consider making it more of an ensemble piece. I mean, yeah, everyone's expecting to see a poster with LeBron James's face and Bugs Bunny's, but unlike the last Space Jam basketball stars, the very best players in the league currently, barring KD, have some really interesting personality quirks, from Steph to Giannis to AD to Kyrie. I think having Space Jam be about a core five instead of just LeBron would be a smart play, but knowing LeBron is already signed on, knowing Kyrie is already doing Uncle Drew, and just the general sort of rivalry with the Warriors and LeBron, I think the movie is pretty much LeBron only at this point, with a few cameos of players he approves of. So I'd expect to see CP3, D. Wade, and maybe even Lonzo Ball, if they can keep his dad out of the movie. Please don't put LeVar in Space Jam. Popular internet humor. Now, due to the current state of internet culture and the meme-dumb at large, jokes and slang tend to grow faster and bigger, but also die out quicker. So when you put a joke that's popular right now into your script, well, by the time the movie's made, the joke is totally irrelevant and cringeworthy. It's how we ended up with a what are those joke in Black Panther. So take my word for it, Space Jam 2. Leave out your scene with Daffy Duck dabbing. Leave out your scene where Porky Pig stutters trying to say something is cool only to end up saying that it's lit. Just leave it out. The NBA is evergreen and so are your Looney Tunes, so just let them be funny. Which brings me to my next point. Let's just go easy on the celebrity cameos. I'm not even saying to nick some like the meme jokes, but let's just go easy on them. I know you want to have a scene where Kate McKinnon plays a kooky doctor, a scene where Channing Tatum is a funny cab driver, and a scene where Keegan-Michael Key is a crazy coach, and 
Well, you see where I'm going with this. The original film opened the door to having these celebrities playing funny roles, but I can totally see the sequel going way overboard with this. So hopefully there's a bit of restraint there, else we delve into Brendan Fraser Looney Tunes world, and we don't talk about that world. So I know this may not be something that everybody wants, but I think it'd be cool to throw in some more meta NBA humor. I know that because the Looney Tunes are involved, it does become more of a kids movie, which yeah, of course it does. But there will be a lot of NBA fans in seats as well. So jokes about Draymond Green kicking people in the crotch, or Harden flopping, or J.R. Smith being drunk on Hennessy, just subtle ones. Something like that would earn a lot of points with diehard NBA fans like me and tons of others. So while I can't understand steering clear of this because it might alienate other viewers, a couple of little nods would be cool. Trust and love your Looney Tunes. A huge pitfall, I think, for this film is going to be the desire to update the Looney Tunes to make them feel more now. And while I do understand it, I don't think the Looney Tunes really need it. I think a great example of how to pull this off would be to look at the new Muppets movie with Jason Siegel. Siegel was a guy who grew up with the Muppets and his love for the property was easily felt in the movie as all the characters really felt, I realize I'm saying felt a lot and that's not a pun. Let me continue on. All of the characters really felt like they had just been unfrozen from the heyday of the Muppets and into this new adventure. Though I didn't enjoy the sequel as much, and they also suffered from that celebrity cameo thing, I think the first film really shows that characters even decades old can still be funny and have heart with almost no updates or modernizing. I mean, the characters are famous for a reason, so let them be them and let the world around them be what's different, which is a perfect segue. My next and possibly most crucial warning for Space Jam 2 is don't make the Looney Tunes 3D. For the love of Mel Blanc, please don't do this. This is without question the biggest no-no. My guess is they're probably looking right now at stuff like Planet of the Apes or Paddington Bear or the new Jungle Book movies and seeing that those aren't only starting to look quite amazing and photo real, but also there's not really any backlash for those films and they're performing really well. Of course, when I say 3D, I do mean like CG characters with dimension instead of 2D cells. But if they do go 3D, air quotes, with the Looney Tunes, I fear there will be grave reviews in the future of this movie. Now, I'm not against this totally. I think the new Christopher Robin movie, for example, looks pretty cool. I think the whimsical stuffed look of the animals works great. But for Bugs and Company, I just don't see this treatment working out in any way. Whether they go for a more realistic vibe like the Christopher Robin stuff, which totally strips the cartoonishness from them, or they go for a more say, illumination kind of look that interacts with real people, which will start to flirt with Smurfs territory. Neither of these would be good. Let's face it, right now in 2018, it's easy to put CG characters into live action. But you know what's hard? Putting 2D characters in with live action and having it actually work. So I challenge you, WB, go back and watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. There's so many interesting dynamics in play when the characters are 2D, so I certainly hope they honor the roots with that one. My next idea might be a little bit too impossible to achieve, but wouldn't it be interesting to sort of draw in the rules of the basketball a little bit? I mean, I still want to see the Looney Tunes doing crazy stuff playing basketball, but what if there were a little bit more limitations placed on them so there was some stakes, like a good classic sports movie where you're like, holy crap, are they going to win? Instead, you have Elmer Fudd pulling out a gun in the middle of the game and... Well, you know how ridiculous that game actually gets, but maybe if the basketball was a little bit more grounded, just a little bit, there'd be just more riding on the game and we'd care more. But that might just not work with the Looney Tunes, but serious props if you pull it off. And last but not least, the most important thing that absolutely must be avoided at all costs in order to make Space Jam 2 not suck. Do not make a Fallout Boy cover of the Space Jam theme. Seriously, I see you thinking about a slick, cool new remix of the famous Quad City DJ song, but literally no one wants that. Even Fallout Boy fans don't want that. So just save yourself the backlash on that one and just use the original song and maybe come up with some other cool new song. After all, Space Jam is best known for its soundtrack, so just get a hold of any of the dozens of artists that would love to be on the Space Jam 2 soundtrack because they grew up with Space Jam 1. This could not be an easier slam dunk for you. Just don't touch the Space Jam song. Y'all ready for this? 
So there we go. Just a few humble ideas from me about how to help out the new Space Jam movie. I'm sure they uh, really need my help. But honestly, as much as the Looney Tunes and the NBA are important to me in my entire childhood, I really won't even be upset if the movie isn't good because, well, I don't expect it to be. Making a movie with the Space Jam concept that's not incredibly dumb will be seriously hard. Outside of the nostalgia goggles, there's not really even much there to live up to. So is making Space Jam 2 a mistake? I guess we'll see. I mean, sure, Space Jam is famous, but not really the movie. Like literally just the Monstars, the Toon Squad jersey, and the soundtrack. Other than that, most people can't tell you much even about the film. So as far as I'm concerned, you're playing with house money, Space Jam 2. But on the other side of the coin, this is 2018, and if the movie sucks, it will be publicly torn to shreds by thousands upon thousands of cartoon and NBA fans all across the internet. So, good luck. Welcome to the, to the slam, if you want to jam.